Hi, it's Marina from Dance Star Astrology and I've been asked to look at the Queen's chart and also the death chart as well. So, okay, so the chart. Now, I thought it was very interesting because Neptune is rising and with with any chart when you when you're querying something and when it's a question, if you've got ne Neptune rising, usually it means that there's something not right about it or um, the time is wrong so I mean the thing is the time is wrong because it 632 well there's very I looked I looked everywhere trying to find time of death and there just wasn't there really wasn't so all it all it had was between 630 and 632 various different times saying it was announced from Buckingham Palace so I so I thought well anyway look the the chart is going to be significant because um, they picked that time. So now I was expecting to see something interesting rising, but there's no interesting stars or anything like that. Um, but Neptune is rising. So n all is not what it seems they want to tell us somehow. So I suppose, you know, in the law, um, in occult law, they have to kind of tell you. So um, they're telling us, that it all is not what it seems. Now, um, I mean, it may well just be that it's private, you know, and why would they want to tell us time of death? But they tell us time of birth. So, you know, it is a little bit strange. They said that Princess Anne and Prince Charles were there, but the rest didn't get there in time, which I think is really strange as well, because like, you'd know, you know, they've got the most advanced doctors. They know uh, if, if, if she's going quickly. And, um, so that, that's kind of strange that the others didn't get there in time. One of them arrived at four and she was already gone. So why did they wait two hours to announce it? Again, maybe this chart has something to tell us. But to be honest, I can't really see what it's telling us. Um, apart from it's a lie, it's a lie with the the, the um, Neptune rising. Um, okay, so we've got, oh, interesting that uh, the moon is, is conjunct Saturn in the 12th house of self-undoing and um you know uh, the dodgy house basically the 12th house again you know this it i don't know uh, it's it's in a t-square so it is it is kind of it is showing us the the conflict between old and new and from what people keep saying now is that the consensus that I keep seeing, you know, when people talk about the Queen is, oh, she was, she was, what we loved about her was she was, wasn't political at all. She, she wasn't. She was very, very neutral, incredibly neutral and very professional, you know. She, she did her duty and we'll, we'll have a look at her chart because I've not, never really looked at her chart either. But, um, but yeah, so she, she does stand for the old guard who were, you know, stiff upper lip and all that. And she got a lot of criticism for that. And, you know, when Diana came along, it was, oh, Diana's a breath of fresh air. She shows her emotions, you know. Um, but, you know, now, looking back at it now, as a older person, older and wiser, you know, um, I did like Diana. I think she did do some amazing things. Um, but... But the monarchy is the monarchy and the price you pay for all that privilege and all that money is you don't have privacy. You don't, you can't just do what you want. You have to restrain yourself. So, uh, I mean, it was sweet that Diana did try and give her boys a normal life and she used to go, I mean, they lived in Kensington, so they used to go to the cinema there. I used to go to that cinema as well. So it's, it, it was, they're very, they were very kind of, close in a way that the royal family have always been like just down the road when I used to live in Hammersmith so um I thought it was always kind of interesting that she did those sort of things and you could and I thought god you know I could have been in the cinema one day and seen them in there which is quite sweet really um but at the same time anyway let's let's look at the death chart first so um yeah we have this t-square and it is it is a feature of the chart because the moon, one of the most important planets, is conjunct Saturn. 
And, you know, Saturn is the planet of death, so it shows a passing away. The 12th house is also the house of mystery and other dimensions, so gone to another dimension. The moon is on, it's the tail of the, of Capricorn, and it, it's transition again. Okay, so I'm back, and yeah, where did that shelf come from? <laughs> Sorry, yes. Um, in between the last, the beginning of this video, um, I got rudely interrupted. So I thought I might as well put up some shelves, and uh, and then I'll come back to you. So it's uh, it's all done now. Anyway, so we were looking up the fixed star that was on the moon of the death chart, um, and it's it is Deneb Al Jadi, which is in the fish tail of the goat. It's the fortunate one, bringer of good news. Mm, not really good news but anyway but it does seem to sway from one to another as Robs Robson Vivian Robson says it said to it's said to cause beneficence and destructiveness sorrow and happiness life and death mm. uh, it's also known as the judicial point of the goat and the goat has a strong air of authority and be can be quite judgmental and critical of others who do not share their high standards so so yeah she i guess if you look at that is kind of describing her i think because moon saturn she was pretty i mean it's an aquarius but that that star is very goat and very capricorn and i haven't looked at her chart yet but i do know i think she's capricorn rising so ill prepared let me have a look quickly um yeah her, her ascendant is 21 Capricorn. You know, it is it is the goat. Anyway, so, so yeah, I just think the chart is interesting because it does show that, that tension between Saturn and Uranus, the past and the future. Are we going to have a progressive mon monarchy now? Are we going to have a slimmed down monarchy? Um, are we going to go republic republican i don't know um because the thing is with prince charles see he he has been known to be political and um but he said in interviews that that was just because he was prince of wales and he could be but when he becomes the monarch then you're supposed to be a political and but then I've seen people say, oh, but he's so into the environment. He can do good things for the environment. And then I just thought, oh, God, here we go. It's going to be the whole green agenda. And, you know, he falls very well into that. Um, yeah, I mean, apparently he had some really um, outrageous views that, oh, my God, I didn't bring my... Because I'm, I'm still getting used to my new setup. So, um, yeah what I was saying about Prince Charles, that he he had apparently very, very controversial views about you could cure cancer by coffee enemas. But I mean, he's a bit of a hippie. He, he's a bit of a boomer hippie. He was, he was born, he's in that boomer, he's the same age as Donald Trump, I think, 70 something, or was he 72? But anyway, yeah, he's that generation. And... But this death chart, I find it, it's, it's, it's kind of, I don't know. Yeah, is it remarkable? Ah, there we go. There's Sarah's, the green issues. I think that's that's the, that was the point of this. I don't know about the timing, um, whether there is some kind of green issue. They're trying to, are they, are they I don't know what they're doing at the moment in terms of laws in the UK. Is this a d distraction? did she die last year i don't know um to be honest but it is interesting that it is there is the uranus square saturn it is in the t square with ceres in leo you know like we leo is you know royalty and ceres in leo is kind of like you know the green king so yeah i think um it may be that, but it, it's not like, it's not like you've got any of the really big fixed stars, 
prominently placed. Oh, what is interesting though is the sun on the descendant. You know, the 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 the, the sun is the head of state and it is setting. So it's like the end of an era, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Let's look at the queen now. So she's got yeah Capricorn rising. So that was the restraint, and I I mean I can appreciate her restraint now because you know. Um, the younger royals didn't show that at all. And, um, you know, so it, it's something that is old school, you know. Yeah, she's even got Saturn on her midheaven as well. Um, and that's in a T-square. A very brave and courageous, though, with the Jupiter-Mars conjunction in the second house in Aquarius. And that's that's opposite Neptune. So the Neptune Mars, I mean, I think, I mean, I know she liked to drink, but she wasn't a huge drinker, but her mum and sister were. So, I mean, we don't know because we, we're not, we're not privy to her, her little habits, but I know that she, she used to have a, she used to have a, she used to drink quite a lot in a day. I can't remember what I read, but it was like, I remember thinking, oh, there's quite a lot of uh, units a day, Queenie. Um, but obviously she lived to 96, so she was all right. But but yeah, so she's also got, oh, she's got Eris with Mercury as well. It's it's reserved, isn't it, really? And the moon, the moon in, with Eris, uh, sorry, Ceres is interesting because she, that's very matriarch, but it's in the eighth house, which is kind of, you know, intrigue and the, the underworld, and it's kind of Persephone in the underworld, almost. My feeling about the Queen, I mean, I know there's all this kind of stuff that the lizards and the royalty are all, you know, are soulless and all this kind of stuff, and, you know, they're very corrupt and all that. Um, I don't get that off the Queen, Queen though. I, I, I don't. And, um... I just think they're a very useful shield for who's really running the show. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's there's much more shady figures around them. And it is an institution. And, and why my brain is not working. I don't know why should, I'm doing this today. It's just I'm tired and people wanted it. So I'm going to try and do it. Um, but maybe she was a kind of Persephone in the underworld of it all and has seen things maybe she shouldn't see or didn't want to see um, with the moon, Sarah's there. I mean, the, the, the weird thing is now, this is what I don't understand, is that, yeah, Charles is going to be defender of the faith. faith. Now, yeah, apparently the Queen was very religious and she, she did live a kind of virtuous life, you know, um... And Prince Philip did have affairs, but she just turned a blind eye because that's what you do. And and I I mean I don't know again did they love each other? I'm sure they did. But this this Mars opposite Neptune, I think you know the sh her shadow was kind of like her sister because she. I mean this it it was well known that she was she used to hang out with the Rolling Stones and and she did used to you know be quite wild Princess Margaret and she's a bit of an icon for people that think, you know, she was the cool royal. But I mean, I just think if you're in that, in in that environment, if you're in that, that job, if you like, um, you, it's your duty to, to uphold the defender of the faith. And this is what I don't, I don't think he's right about Prince Charles being king, is that he hasn't. And why the hell did her uncle, Edward, you know, Edward VIII, he had to, they went through all that big abdication lark because he was going to marry someone who was divorced. He had, he wasn't divorced. And yet Charles can now become king, not only marrying someone divorced, but being divorced himself. And yeah, I just think it's really, I don't think it's, I don't think it's right. And I'm, I know this sounds like, oh, who are you to judge? But he's supposed to be the defender of the faith. And all that sad trauma and everything that they went through. And in the end, um, they, he's still going to be king with Camilla anyway. They might as well. Oh, I don't know. It, it, it's, it, it's just annoying. So, 
So yeah, so I think they've. I think maybe they've just had to do that now because because they've got to keep up with the times. But someone also said, oh, you know, the the Queen bless her. She she was she tried to keep her family together, but they all divorced. And yeah, it was a lot to live up to to this kind of medieval mentality that the royal family had to were living by and I just thought what do you mean medieval yeah this medieval institution I just thought it's not really medieval uh it's it's like what people aspire to still family values and not divorcing I mean I'm speaking as someone who isn't you know has divorced twice um so you know I'm not kind of judging it but um, yeah, the position they're in, they are supposed to uphold these kind of family values. And I don't, but I don't think it's medieval to expect them to do that, um, because they're defenders of the faith. And the whole point about religion is, I mean, I know in the Church of England, they recognise divorce. So, hmm, that's true. Sorry, I'm thinking in my Catholic head, where you can only marry once, there's no divorce. Um, so... So yeah, uh, fair enough. But I, I still think it's a little. I think, I think it would have been better just to skip to William. I really do. But all right. I, I. But I think Charles suits this the agenda. So anyway, let's have a look at his chart then, shall we? So his chart. I mean, it's wide, but he's also got the Jupiter Mars conjunction that his mother has, except is in Sagittarius he's got no joining aspects it's kind of all on all on or all off he's only got squares and trines so uh yeah the sort of adaptability factor isn't really there whereas with the queen she did now Sarah's for yeah the environmental issues are very upfront because yeah he's got He's got Ceres and Pluto in his first house. Interesting. So the death chart has Ceres in Leo at 20 degrees. And his Ceres is in Leo at 19 degrees. So he was having a Ceres return when his mother died. So that's really interesting. So yeah, I mean, this is the sort of thing I wanted to see. is some kind of thing that makes me go, ooh, you know, and that does. So it's the green issues. I think that's that really is what it what he's going to be about. And they had to they want him in because he's he's going to play the game. And the thing is with the queen, she didn't. I'm sure they wanted her to be a bit more. Uh, what's the word? Progressive than she wanted to be. And and her way of getting out of it was just kind of like, you know, just. I'm not saying anything, I'm not saying anything, I'm just standing back. Uh, whereas I think, I think Prince Charles will speak out and it'll be all like, yeah, that's really refreshing because he's speaking out about green issues. You know, I'm all for, for organic living and I, I want the earth to be, I don't want it to be polluted, but it's going to be, we know it's going to be just twisted for their agenda, isn't it really? So, so yeah, he's got Presepe rising, which is the spirit of the ancestors. So he is, you know, part of this long line. And that will be, I think he'll make a big deal of that. You know, that he's his mother's son. Because she had such a long, he's never going to be, you know, have a reign as long as his mother. Um, so he's going to be like, I'm sure he's going to sort of be this continuation. Um... But at the same time, slowly bring in this green stuff as well. So he's also got, so he's ruling planet as the sun. Yeah, I know there is a lot of Leo in the royal family. I thought the queen had Leo. Oh, of course, yeah, moon. So she's got moon in Leo. He has got Leo ascendant. So, so yeah, so that's kind of interesting too, the, the Leo theme. Ah, I see. He also has the Venus-Neptune conjunction that is on his IC. So, you see, that's the, the fairy tale romance, which he kind of had with Diana, but it wasn't real. 
um, it's kind of interesting that it was it's connected with the IC, which is the father. So I mean, I guess you know Prince Philip he wanted he wanted that he, he wanted the, the, to secure the kind of su succession. So you know, a young nineteen year old girl, virgin, whatever that's important for the royal family, always, and um, and that's what he did. So, and he's got Moon in Taurus and she has Sun in Taurus. So, you know, they're very, they are quite similar, you know, quietly regal with the Moon in Leo in the eighth house. And, and then the Moon in Taurus, which is really down to earth and practical as well. Sorry, the Sun in Taurus, which is isolated, actually. It's not connected to the rest of the chart. So it's unaspected. So, you know, unaspected planets are a little bit, you know, they, they are shy. You know, it wasn't really integrated. Prince Charles, you know, his son in Scorpio, it is more intense and he's pretty fixed as well because his moon is also in a fixed sign, Taurus. His moon is with the North Node. What are they on? Yeah, he's, his moon's on Mirac which is in, Mirac is in Andromeda, very sort of beauty, beauty. I think the moon in Mirac is, is Diana, you know, and the North Node. And she had, you know, she was very fated. And, and it's also interested, interesting that that's in the 10th house, almost like his, everyone, you can't really look at him without thinking of Diana. You know, Diana was what everybody wanted when they used to go out on, their walkabouts and everything it's, it's like she was she was his status so and you see it, you can see it in his chart i don't yeah also he's got moon he's got moon trine saturn so there's the tradition there as well earthy earthy i am a little bit worried about the it's it's jupiter opposite uranus not mars um but they 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 almost look like they're all bunched together and opposite it really um it's a wide conjunction of the jupiter see i see that as a super planet even though even though mars isn't technically opposite uranus it it's when you put mars and mars and jupiter together they it's very fiery and passionate in a fire sign and then it's opposite yeah uranus so Jupiter, Uranus opposition, freedom, and also very much, you know, wanting to change things. It is, it's definitely less reserved, that's for sure. And Leo rising, very fixed, because sun, moon, and the ascendant, they're all fixed. So he's stubborn. He's very, very stubborn. And I don't know if he will unite the family uh, in the way that the queen did. Um, you know, there's there's a lot going on between his sons. There's still that, you know, the, the whole Meghan Markle thing as well. All right, the, to sum it up, the most interesting things are, for me, is that the, the death chart is, it has Neptune rising, so all is not what it seems, really. Um, the fact that the sun is setting is, it's the empire that they said the sun never sets on the empire and the empire is setting and we, we're coming into this new king, which I don't know what people, the general public feel about it. Um, are they excited? I'm not. If it was maybe William, maybe I would be, but Oh, yeah, another thing. He said he was going to be defender of faith. So that worries me too, the, the loss of the Christianity thing. Because, oh, you know, England's changed a lot since the 1950s and now we have multi-faith. I don't want him to... Uh, you know, you want the head of, of, of the country to be defender of the, the Church of England. It, if it's going to get all internationalist and globalist you know, glow, then I, I just think it's gone. Forget about the empire. I just want Britain to be Great Britain and to have sovereignty. Um, and if your head of state hasn't got that or wants to be 
the defender of faiths, then... Mm, I don't know. I don't think that's a good sign, actually. Um, his south node is on Gay Crux, the crucifix, with Mercury, which is also in Gay Crux. So, you know, but that's in the south. That's in the past, almost. So it's like moving away to that, to the north node, moon. I, I think Diana should have been queen. I know this sounds stupid to say now. I don't. I don't think it's going to be good I mean he comes in on this kind of cost of living crisis and uh and I, I think people the reason people are so upset about the queen's death is because they know it's the end it really is the end of I was gonna say the west but the end of of Great Britain you know it's not great anymore I don't know, but I don't like the deceptive Neptune rising on the Queen's death chart. I think, I just think it's very interesting that her, the Queen's chart, Queen Elizabeth has, you know, Moon with, Moon with Ceres and then Lilith with Neptune as well, which is, creeps me out a bit as well. You know, just the whole kind of scandal with Prince Andrew and, and Epstein and all that, that the, the Lilith Neptune in the Queen's chart in the eighth house just kind of makes me think of all of that. And it's really interesting that her, her Mars and Jupiter are opposite that, like that she had to sort of fight that, that somehow. Um, but she, I think she, she was the one, she did yeah, she did um, stop Andrew from... She kind of relieved him of his duties. Oh, my God. Her her IC is Algol as well. Beheading. Wow. So, well, the beheading really was the abdication. So I would... Yeah, I mean, she became queen on the back of this abdication of, of Edward VIII. I mean, I... I don't really understand. I mean, you know, I think they got rid of him for other reasons. What would have happened if he had become king? But I just think it's very interesting. Algol on the IC of the Queen's chart. Charles, I think he is going to be political. We'll see. Thanks for listening. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.